All right, good afternoon. First off, just thoughts and prayers with everyone in Charlottesville. Um, unspeakable. Um, and just, uh, you know, you know everyone, everyone is grieving for them. Our hearts are grieving. And, uh, thoughts and prayers and any support that they should ever need from us, they got it. So, uh, that being said, uh, open to questions, please. Mario? Uh, I'm thinking some of your players might have known Deshaun Penny and some of the other guys, but, or, or Deshaun, I mean, even if they didn't, do you talk to the team about that kind of thing, and how do you handle this kind of situation as a coach? Well, we haven't been able to meet as a team since I'm learning all the facts, so this is, uh, again, just as tragic as it gets, certainly unnecessary. But would you, I mean, is there some kind Always of do, this? always do, always do, always, always. Can't stop teaching, can't stop learning. Um, you can't ever do too much to do whatever you can to prevent tragedy. And, uh, rough. I think more more importantly, just uh, just thoughts and prayers of the families, man. Good, 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 good young people, good young men. Futures ahead of them, and everyone, uh, the one that knows their families or doesn't know their families, but associated with the conference with college football, sports, life in general, needs to do everything possible to support them because what they're going through is like nothing we could ever imagine or ever hope for or wish for upon anybody. So we all gotta really, really do everything we can to show support. Looking at the Clemson coach, yes, sir. Um, just what have you seen from them on tape and kind of stands out for you? Well, obviously they've been a, an elite team for a long time. We have really set the, the standard uh, in the conference for a good number of years now. Uh, elite talent, big, explosive, fast, powerful guys, playmakers across the board. Um, really impressive up front on both sides of the ball. Uh, and they're complemented by just tremendous playmakers. You know, it's, it's what you want your roster to look like, no doubt. Does their culture also show up on tape? And they've been good for a while. Now? It has. It has. I've seen them up close and personal at the, during uh, as an assistant coach at the University of Alabama, and um, you know it's almost you know when those two teams played almost look like mirror images, you know of each other. Um, so, but yeah, you know culture is certainly shows up in in not only caliber of play and making plays, but the way you play the game, and they play the game the right way. What led to the decision of starting Jakari Brown this past weekend, and how would you evaluate his performance? Well, he's been practicing really well. Um, you know, we have we have some injuries and some deficits personnel-wise. Um, and bless you. And considering where we are in terms of you know those situations, being down for starting offensive lineman, having some receivers coming back, being down a tight end or two. Um, felt it gave us the best chance, a combination of his ability to throw and run the ball gave us the best chance and, uh, and it proved to be a you know, good thing for us. When he arrived in the spring, he was pretty frank and said, I, I know I need to get better as a passer. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, you know, since he arrived, have you seen mm -hmm. impressive growth, I guess, uh, in that phase of his game? Oh, or? he sure has. He sure has. And, you know, and quite frankly, you know, as he improves, it's also important to mention that we need the supporting cast to improve as well, right? And I think everybody, uh, you brought great energy to the team. You know, when you're, a, when you're a true freshman and you get the nod like that and the first drive is a successful drive, that, that brings some pretty good juice and energy. You know, we had, you know, been a little bit since we were moving the ball successfully. So uh, you provide a tremendous amount of juice right then and there and confidence in the team. So it sparked us. Wesley getting the start. His you know, snap counts have gone up, I think, pretty much every week since like week two or week three. Yeah. Um, but obviously, this is just another step for him. What What is it that he 
again, it's been a progression. I'm sure it's not like one thing has finally clicked for him. It's just right. like, well, what is the biggest area that you've maybe seen growth these last few weeks that, that gave you the confidence to kind of lean on him as, as the big guy? Been having that confidence. You know, he just finally made the move. Uh, he's like an eraser. You know, let's say uh, a team blocks counter well and the ball's about to spit out there, boom, second and eight. Because he can accelerate, he's a striker, he's got great hips, great balance and body control. As instinctive as it gets, I mean, he's, you know, you want a, you want a team full of Wesleys, right? High level football players uh, that it means the world to. Like there's, that guy hates losing. That guy refuses to give in. You know, mentality, obviously, you know, playing at uh, Miami Central and the great culture that they've had over there for a long time uh, is something that's in his DNA, and he's, he's bringing that over here as well. Uh, his teammates love him. He's a great compliment to them as well. Um, he brings a lot to the table, and he's just a freshman. You know, he's, and his body's still growing. He's gained about 20-some odd pounds since he's been here. So proud of him, um, and his best football is ahead of him. So, And the best part is... His confidence to come to the sideline now where he comes over and man, it's like make a correction and roll. Pretty impressive. So much is, is you know, guys like Jakari, Wesley, uh, Nez, Julio Skinner making contribution, them getting early playing time, getting a chance to make key contributions in their first year. Is something you can you know talk to recruits about and say, Hey, you can come in quickly and make a big impact. Well, I mean, it's uh it's good, it's positive, right? Because we're playing a lot of freshmen. Um, I think it's good to see some of the older guys playing really well also. And then when I say when you say young guys, I think a guy like Cam Kitchens stands out too. I mean, he's a sophomore. James Williams, he's only a sophomore, you know. And you've got some older guys playing well. I, I think it's always important, you know, when you talk about young guys doing really well, it's also important to mention older guys that are doing well also. Because if not, you start isolating guys. And that's not good for team dynamics. And that's not, you know, what this thing is about. It's about guys whether they're just got here or been here a while that do it to a certain standard and are able to do it consistently at a certain standard so uh, but Inez Cooper we've talked about him a ton uh, Nigel League starts on certain packages for us as well we mentioned Wesley um, Jakari um, gosh who else there's been a good chunk of guys Jaleel. that have been out there Jaleel you know got his touchdown um, or whatnot those two guys are roommates so I'm sure you know if I get a picture frame or something like that <laughs> um, but all in all, it's just uh, it's good to see, and it shows the importance of just sticking with it and developing throughout the course of the year. Because at some point in time, it, you know, if a guy's highly skilled enough and wants it enough and puts in the time, it's going to pop. And for those guys, it's popping. Is that something that you notice that you know when you talk to recruits that makes their, their ears perk up a little bit when they see things like that? Well, it validates what you're saying, you know. And uh, but traditionally, look at the places that we've been at. Um, we have a very strong track record for playing freshmen. You know, at, at some points, you know, top two or three in the country most every single year. You know, and at every position from the, the left tackle position to quarterback to wide receiver to tight end. So it's something that we believe in. Uh, you know, the best players have to play, you know, and they're going to get a chance to prove it all the time. You said this morning that Cam Kitchen's film sessions are legendary. Hmm. Can you expand on that? <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you like seeing that, you know, I, you know, I like to think I have the building to myself late at night, <laughs> you know, so when I see someone in there, it's, you know, a little uneasy, you know, I feel like someone's trying to outwork me, it makes me upset, so, um, but he's that, he's that guy, he's always trying to find an edge, you know how it is in ball, if, if, if you could find an extra step, if you could find a tip that's going to get you a better angle, that's going to allow you to anticipate and buy you a step or two, it's going to allow you to make plays. You know, because if you're behind, it's going to lie to be the victim of a play. He understands that. He understands that it's uh, being a student of the game can result in just some unbelievable um, improvements, you know, in all phases of your game. And not to mention the impact that has on other guys when they see a guy like that do well. Like, well, you know, is he all of a sudden running faster? He's going to run faster every year. Is he getting bigger and stronger? Yeah, he's going to do that every year. But he's putting in time. And that time has accumulated where he's, he's playing at a really, really high level. Is that infectious yet? Are you guys joining him yet? I think or so. Is that kind of the goal? I think so. It has to be completely, it has to completely permeate a locker room, right? That's always been the best teams that we've been able to coach on and play on. The ones that understand that, you know, the ones that aren't in a hurry when practice is over, you know, like the old Flintstones, right? You know, the thing goes off and Fred's in that car and he's hauling, but he wants to go home and eat, right? That's what you don't want. 
you know, you really want the guys when, when it's over, well, let's get on the jugs machine, right? Let's go watch some more film because everyone has the same 20 hours. What are the guys doing the other hours? And we have a good group of guys, a good core of guys that are doing that. And that's gonna keep spreading out more and more and more. To play your success, though, it's gonna have to be that. Do so. guys like Cam and Wesley, just the local kids, is that a big deal to have them fly more in terms of recruiting, maybe especially like to have those examples of those local kids who come in and have success here? They're the right kind of kids, you know? Uh, they have to be the right kind of local kids. They have to be local but they're the right kind of kids, the right kind of young men. I like to refer to them. I don't think I've used the word kids, oh, gosh, since I can remember. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's the right kind of guys. Like this football thing, this a, whether people want to admit it or not, it's a way of life, you know? Um, yeah, of course, you want it to be fun, but it's a way of life. It's fun when you're winning, it's fun when you're Kick it butt. Well, to kick butt, you have to put in time. You have to be willing to put in time that other people aren't willing to put in. So, um, so it's awesome that they're local because that's a great example, and it's a big reason why a lot of us are here. You know, we we believe in Florida and particularly South Florida football. Different level of players and mentality. Well, you want the right ones, not just any. You want the right ones here, the ones that understand that and are willing to put in the time to do so. We're not going to shy away from that. We want the, right, we want the hard working, tough, uh, resilient, high achieving mentality guys that want to go in there and do something about that, you know, and make it real. So. Mario, your, your team has been doing particularly well on the road, um, which is always tougher. What makes them so good on the road? We've been talking about that to see if there's something, if there's something process wise. Um, not sure, you know, it's hard to put a finger on. I know that we have started faster on the road, you know, and you always look into that. Like when you, when you, it's kind of funny when you go on the road, what, what have they told you since you've been like knee high? Hey, when we go on the road, it's a business trip. We're taking our, what we do at home or we're making it as much as we can make it almost identical on the road as when we do it at home. Well, you know, we, we've had success on the road particularly in conference, um, and we've just been, we've been working our processes. It's been nothing, nothing magical or nothing whatnot. You know, we like to have that kind of success at home. Obviously. Also, you've been at Clemson, right? You, you've been to Memorial right. Stadium, I think, or the, oh, it's, it's tough. Like, what is that atmosphere like when you were there and, mm -hmm. you know? It's off the charts, you know? It is great college environment, <laughs> you know? Can't really hear yourself think. So you got to be well prepared. You got to practice for it. Um, they use it to their advantage. The crowd certainly plays a factor, um, and you got to prepare for it. You know, and on the road, I think our guys have done a good job handling that. And going to have to prepare, you know, uh, to handle it again. You know, against a great football team that's very well coached. Coach, what can you tell us as far as injuries? Do you expect any any guys back, particularly uh, Jalen Rivers or Henry Harris or Leonard Taylor? I don't know. I don't know. I'll know a little bit more later today. Uh, I feel good about Henry Parrish. I feel good about Leonard Taylor. I feel that Jalen has a chance, you know, sooner than later. Um, who else do you have on there? Uh, Van Dyke as well. He's doing really well also, you know. So I think all these guys, uh, they're right at the cusp, you know. I think, I think uh, Leonard and Henry are ahead of the other two, but the other two are right there where we feel that they got a great shot to play Saturday. And then and on the same note uh, about Jared Harrison Hunt, um, mm -hmm. Elijah Roberts, uh, and Jake Lichtenstein, mm -hmm. I think that's it, that's great. I feel good about Elijah. Uh, Jake, I think it's gonna take a little bit longer. Harrison Hunt, I would put him in the same category as, um, as TBD and as um, Jalen Rivers. Coach Cheney, I know you said maybe this would be the week or next. Mm -hmm. there a he is, he's practicing full speed. Full speed. So we'll see what this thing looks like throughout the course of the week. You know. For him, obviously, it's, you know, for years now, it's been hard for him to stay on the field. Just how mm -hmm. important do you think it would be for him to get some live action here in these last two weeks? Hmm. <laughs> how important do you think it is? Probably pretty important. Oh, <laughs> well, you think? Yeah. Without a doubt, you know, especially the teams that we're playing against. These guys, these are hard-hitting football teams that play really, really fast. 
So it's really important, you know, our return to play specialist, uh, Joe Girardi does a really good job getting these guys in condition and making sure that they are like this, tied at the hip with the medical staff to make sure that they are capable of playing. And then once they are, like right now we feel Don Chaney is, is good to go. Now we have to practice and he has to, he has to experience some physicality in practice, right? To make sure that not only is he physically ready, but he's also mentally capable of handling what comes with, you know, being away for what, 10, 12 weeks. And then all of a sudden, you know, going right back at it. So there'll be an acclimation process throughout the week and hopefully we'll be in a good place on Friday and we can have some good news for you. What was he showing you before the injury? Because he was still coming back from something. He was still coming back. You know, he was still coming back. You saw the flashes, you know, big guy, get downhill in a hurry. Um, a talent of those big guys <coughs> is uh, making people miss subtly, you know. Really good backs can avoid those those collisions, those car crash type collisions where they can make a guy miss, maintain their balance and body control and make that thing go another 5, 10, you know, 50 yards. And he showed that ability. Um, really good hands out of the backfield. He's got a lot of, for a big guy, he's got a lot of wiggle, particularly in the passing game. Um, and he's got really, really good vision. Really good vision. Like understands how to set up his blocks, understands where leverage is, understands probably the most important thing for a back, understand the intent of the play. You know, the play is, is intends to go here, but due to the structure and the blocking scheme and the double teams, it's probably going to roll here or spit there. And I think he understands that really well. Also knows protections really well. So. Coach, just physically with him, um, mm -hmm. since we last saw him in August, weight change, anything, he, he looks different now? Uh, or he does. What he able to do? Uh, I don't have his weight on me. I remember, I think I remember seeing yesterday, I think it was at 212, some of that nature. So he's a good size back. He's a big guy that can run, get downhill. And that's about his playing weight, you know. Was he higher before? Was he higher before? He was. He got up there a little bit. Okay. You know, he got up there. We'll wrap up with Luke in the back. How crucial was it to get younger guys like Mark Williams, Cyrus Moss involved in the end of last game? Well, I think anytime you can get guys on the field, it's awesome, man. Right? You know, you work hard. Um, you may not have earned, you know, starter type reps, but being on the field and getting those first reps, it's, it's, it's invaluable. It really is um, because now you got to do it live. It's going to be viewed by all your peers, right? You've got to get the call from the sideline. You got to make the adjustment on the field. And then there's no do over. There's no whistle. Hey, you know, let's reload this play, run it again. No, now it's real. So those guys got some really valuable reps. Cyrus almost had a sack. Marquis did well. Jaden had a good, uh, did some really good things as well. We're doing Alan Hay in there, Ahmad Moten. Um, who else? We're a good chunk of guys. Good chunk of guys. So. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you guys. Have thank a good day. You.